Hello and welcome to our podcast that we are calling Theme Revisited, moving from summary to analysis. This is a very difficult skill of helping students move from what they observe in a text, and that's the idea of summary, to what they are thinking deeply about in that text, and that is analysis. So let's go ahead and see what we're talking about. So first off, let's review for a minute. What exactly is theme in a text? Theme is the author's comment on the human condition. Basically, this is what the author is trying to say or to teach all people through this text. Oftentimes we say that the theme is not only what the author is just saying about being human and how difficult it, we have it here on earth, but also what that author is trying to teach all of humanity. And it should be a, a universal concept. While the characters and the plot and the setting may teach the characters in a text certain things, we're unlikely to be in a very similar scenario. But what can we as human readers learn from this text, even though we're not in the text? That is theme. And so one thing we wanted to clear up right away is what is the difference between theme and the idea of thematic issues? Because I think oftentimes we see students coming in with a misunderstanding, something that we see as two different items. As we've said on the previous slides, we see theme as a lesson, a comment that an author is making through their text. So they might be trying to teach us that yes, if you work hard enough, you can overcome any obstacle. It's some sort of lesson, some sort of teaching statement. That's theme. That's going to be different from how we see thematic issues. Thematic issues are one word answers. Things like family, love, coming of age, war, conflict, those types of words that might be a topic within a text. They might be what the author is using as the setting in order to reveal theme, but these one word answers are not theme. Theme is always going to be a statement or a lesson, whereas thematic issues might be topics or just the subjects that a book is about. And so in order to deduce theme from the text we are looking at, we have to examine the literary elements that authors use to teach their theme. Because no text is going to say on the last page of the novel, congratulations, you've made it. Clearly you can see that the lesson of this book is don't judge other people. It doesn't say that. But authors do reveal their theme through various literary elements. So regardless of what year you are in high school, I'm sure you have learned various literary elements. And we have podcasts on each of these, so you can look at them in a little bit more depth if you'd like. But the shortened point we'd make in this recording is that we have to observe and track these literary elements and then ask ourselves, how does that literary element reveal a lesson to us, somebody who is not in the text? So one quick example, how does a dynamic character teach us something? Well, the first thing is we have to observe that a character is changing. Then we have to ask ourselves, what does that character learn that causes them to change? And then the third step is apply it to ourselves. Well, if this character learns that, why can't I learn that same message? And why can't I walk away becoming a better person? That is probably theme. Now, since this is a film class, we get to add another layer of elements. So not only do we have the literary elements where film has things in common with literature, but we get to add the cinematic elements. These are things that are unique to film. We get to look at camera angles, camera motion, color palette, lighting, and sound. So not only do we have to track the story or the literary level, but we get to track the cinematic stuff. Why would the author choose this camera angle at this moment? How does it change by the end? Why would the director choose this color palette with this scene right now? How does it change as the story progresses? Why would they choose this lighting here or there on a certain character? We have to look at those moments, pay attention to them, track them, and then propose meaning. Why would they do this? Well, what are they teaching us through these angles, through this emotion? Basically, the grammar of film. And so what steps should we take in order to analyze film? These are the same steps we teach our students in our regular English classes to analyze literature. Number one, we have to identify that a literary or cinematic element is even happening. 
we have to pay attention and say, ooh, that was a motif. That was a piece of foreshadowing. That was irony. But in film class, we have to add things like, oh, that was a close-up. That was low-key lighting. Oh, that was a Dutch angle. So we have to be actively viewing so that we can observe and track. The second step is to think about how that element is treated. What is happening that the director has chosen a Dutch angle? What is happening that they have chosen this type of framing? What is going on that they choose to move the camera on a dolly rather than just pivot in a pan or in a tilt? And then ultimately, step three, we have to think about, and this is the analysis part, how you might be being pushed by the author to react to that and to learn from that choice. If you notice that a character is always being filmed in a certain angle, and then by the end of the film, they're being filmed in a different angle, we have observed that, we have tracked that, and now we have to apply some deep thinking to the grammar of film. What is this change in camera angles saying about the character? And therefore, what can we learn from that item? And so some examples. When we examine the literary element of setting in a text, we have to ask ourselves, why does setting matter? For example, take the science fiction film Moon. First, we have to notice that the setting is the moon, and this character does not have any other characters on the moon with him, nor does he have any ability to communicate with Earth. Then we have to apply some deep thinking and ask ourselves, what is the author trying to teach us if the character succumbs to the setting, meaning he can't survive? What lesson does that teach us as human beings? Or what does it teach us when this character overcomes that exceptionally difficult setting? What does it teach us when he is struggling for 90 minutes of this film, yet he succeeds in the end? There, setting matters, and setting helps reveal theme. And in film, just like any other piece of literature, we can have great settings that put characters into difficult situations. Look at Apocalypse Now. Gravity? What happens when we have people lost in space, basically? The Shining? What happens when we put characters into a hotel setting that has been closed off for the winter season and they're basically isolated? How about Lifeboat, where we have six or seven characters on a lifeboat that have been rescued after their boat was sunk by an enemy torpedo? Little Miss Sunshine? What happens if we put a bunch of dysfunctional characters together on a three-day road trip in a VW bus? And then Apollo 13. What if we put a couple of characters together in a falling apart spaceship? in the middle of space. If they fail in that setting, that teaches us one thing. If they rally together and overcome that setting, it might teach us something else. Another literary term we could look at is the idea of characters. What if we have a good character who does good things? What should we learn from that? What if we have a character who changes, a dynamic character, and he learns how to do something better? What should we learn from that character? That's going to be analysis of that text. We observe and track, and then we move to analysis. What does he learn? Therefore, what can we learn? That's most likely going to be a theme we can pull out from that text. And again, in film, we have great characters. We've got Voldemort. We've got Darth Vader. We have the old man from the movie Nebraska. We have the Denzel Washington character from Philadelphia, Aaron Brockovich. We have Nina from Black Swan. And we have Marty McFly's dad from Back to the Future. We can see what these characters go through. We can see which ones change and which ones stay static. What can we learn from their static nature? Or what can we learn from their dynamic nature? That is moving from summary, meaning what I observe and can track, to analysis. What they learn, therefore what do I learn? And then since it's a film class, we can look at cinematic elements. What might a director be saying when he or she uses a high angle while filming a character? What might the director be saying when we have a certain type of music playing behind a fight scene? If we have comical music, what's it saying about that scene? Is this really that big a deal? Is our hero going to die? If they have extremely serious or intense music, that changes the flavor of that fight scene. And then why might a director choose a certain type of editing for a certain moment in the text. Again, we have to move from summary, which is I observe it and this is what's going on, to analysis. What is the director saying? What can we interpret the director as saying with this type of lighting, framing, music, or editing? And then what can we learn as human beings from that moment in the text? Again, that is most likely theme the lesson about life. And so just a summary of these steps that we have mentioned before. Number one, we always have to identify what is happening in the text. 
whether it's a simile that just happened, foreshadowing, irony, character change, setting, cinematic lighting, editing, framing, whatever. We have to identify that. We must track those throughout the text. Then we have to do some brain work. We have to think, what have we observed and why might we be seeing this? What are we supposed to learn from this piece of literary stuff at this particular moment in the text? If the character changes, what am I supposed to learn? If the character is shown as powerless because of a high angle, what am I supposed to learn? It's, it's a hard skill. It's something we'll continue to use throughout the entire school year. That's the point of these classes, trying to push us to think more deeply about text. So that's about it in terms of this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Let's remember the steps. Observe and track. Think deeply about what we've seen. How can that connect to the text itself? But also how can we as human beings connect to that notion also? Think deeply. And that is most likely the author's attempt at revealing theme, a lesson that is universal for all people. So as always, thanks. If you have any questions, please bring those into class. Otherwise, we will see you soon. Thanks.